So it's 2025 and I thought it is the perfect time to assess the impact that Starlink has had on the Zimbabwean internet sector. Now obviously it's too early for us to have a truly scientific assessment since the Postal and Telecommunications Regulatory Authority, that was a mouthful, Portra's report for Q4 of 2024 is coming out early 2025. So if that's something that you're probably looking forward to, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Now I know it feels like an eternity, but we've only had Starlink for just a few months, but a lot has happened since the launch of Starlink in Zimbabwe. Starlink was launched in Zimbabwe on the 7th of September, and Zimbabwe was the 14th country on the continent to get the low Earth orbit satellite service. So the question is, has Starlink had an impact on the internet space in Zimbabwe? The simple answer is yes. The internet space is vastly different since the introduction of Starlink into Zimbabwe. In case you've forgotten, Zimbabwe had some of the most expensive internet on the African continent, and getting unlimited internet for under $50 was something that was unheard of. Blaze LTE and liquid non-geolocked lines were selling well over $200 US on the black market. The cheapest internet one could get was from Tel1 with their ADSL but it was very slow and experienced a lot of faults. Generally, internet in Zimbabwe was bad across the board and service providers did not care. Now things are a whole lot different. Liquid Telecom's non-geolog lines are now selling for $20, but there's no need to get them because Econet Smart Biz lines are selling for $1. And for $45, customers are getting unlimited internet at five megabits per second. So if there's one thing that Starlink brought, it's healthy competition. More and more players are giving cheaper alternatives. There's a company called Dolphin Telecom who are offering unlimited managed internet, whatever that means, at $55 a month for a 20 megabit connection. And another company called Tactel, which is selling unlimited internet for $10 a month. Although right now, Tactel are currently testing their internet in Harare. Now Zimbabweans have a lot more options to choose from thanks to the introduction of Starlink. Now secondly, Starlink also brought with it affordable internet in the rural areas. Now a few months ago, it was unheard of that somebody in the rural areas would pay $30 for internet, unlimited internet for that matter. In fact, lodges in many tourist destinations across the country used to fork out thousands of dollars a year to connect to the internet through Vsat which was very slow by the way. Now, because of economic reasons, it made no sense for local players to invest in the rural areas. Luckily, Starlink was there to intervene. So, inversely, you see that the government managed to cover the whole nation. They managed to give 100% internet coverage to Zimbabwe just by introducing Starlink into the country. Now, thirdly, Starlink managed to introduce better quality internet into the country. You know, Zimbabweans are getting probably the best internet they've ever had in a long time due to the competition that is there as a result of the introduction of Starlink. The speeds have improved, the downtime drastically reduced, and for the first time I received a call from one of the service providers asking me to come back to their service. Come back with me and let's talk about this. And that is how desperate they are, which is good news for us consumers, right? Now, not to mention even the intangible benefits, more and more Zimbabweans are online as a result of the introduction of Starlink. There has also been an impact in the education sector as many schools have already connected to Starlink. The same can be said about the health sector as well. And there's also been a direct benefit to the economy through the collection of taxes. Also, there's been a high uptake of solar products to power the Starlink kits like portable power stations and many other cascading benefits. Now we can only know the full extent of the benefits that have accrued to the nation when Potras released their report. Now, when I think about it, we really needed Starlink to get into the country. I think a lot of things have balanced out. There was no will on the part of the local players to reform in any way, right? Although I'm confident that we'll see the true extent of these benefits in a year or two. So what do you think? Has Starlink been beneficial to the Zimbabwean economy? Leave a comment down below. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.